on the message, the unfailing body word. The unfailing body word in the evening time. The unfailing body word in the evening time. Okay, Luke chapter 14. Let's read from verse 16. The unfailing body word at the marriage. You can put it that way. The unfailing body word at the marriage. Because marriage is taking place now. Is that right? And the marriage is a place of communing. A place of eating. That is the marriage. The marriage is all about eating. Becoming one with the word of the Lord. So Luke 14, we read from verses 16. Luke chapter 14. Okay. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant to, at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. Remember, they are filling body word at supper time. All things are now ready. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and shewed the, his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring, to, bring in either the poor, and the maimed, and the old, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and edges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidding shall taste of my supper. May the Lord God add blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. So, I want to speak on the message, the unfilling body word, at supper time. Supper time was something that was very, very um, noted by the prophet of the hour. He said, there shall be light at the evening time. And the Bible told us about the morning and the evening sacrifice that each of the Israelites had to offer. It shows us a continuous sacrifice. And today, our bodies is what we are demanded to offer. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. So our bodies are presented daily, continuously, as a living sacrifice. And that is why we've said that in Christianity, as you journey, sacrifice is important. We are meant to have different levels of consecration. Is that right? Different levels of consecration to the Lord. You know, you read your Bible, you will see that one time God told Ezekiel to lie down on one side of his body for a certain number of days. I don't know how many number of days again. I told him to lie down just on that side of the body. Then after that, lie on the other side of the body for a certain number of days. These things are different levels of consecration that are demanded. Now that's in the literal. In as you as a believer, there are levels of sacrifice God needs from you. Sometimes the Lord could demand of you, do not watch TV for one year. 
that could be a sacrifice that God has demanded of you. If you go against it, it becomes a sin. Not that watching TV is a sin, but God could say of you, make this sacrifice for me. He could tell you, go off the internet for a certain number of years or months or days. It's the sacrifice is demanding of you. Everyone that comes to God must make sacrifice. There must be something you are sacrificing in order to be of service to the Lord. So the sacrifice is because you want to consecrate yourself. Are you listening? You want to consecrate yourself. You want to dedicate yourself. You want to have nothing impeding your spiritual connection to God. You don't want to have anything impeding it in any way. So Brother Bram noted so much the implication of the evening time, the sacrifice offered at the evening time. Elijah, when it was evening time, he said, you've done all you could. It's not time for me to call upon the name of my Lord. And then we see that all of these things, many of them were done at the evening time. And so at evening time is when you also have supper. It is the time of communion. You know, in Revelation chapter 3, when Jesus was driven out of Laodicea, he stood at the door and was continuously knocking. I was saying that he that will open up, I will come into him. Is that right? And I will do what? I will sup with him. Sup, supper. Is that right? It's at evening time. So it is at evening time that the Lord is calling on people, imploring them to open up to him so that he can commune with them. He can sup with them. Is that right? He can give of himself to them. So it takes place at the evening time. At the evening time, there shall be light. And we're looking this evening, the unfeeling body word at supper time. Because what the Lord God is serving at this period of, this, of the evening time is supper. And is himself, the unfeeling body word, is what he is offering. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 19. In Revelation 19, we see two kinds of supper that I want us to briefly look at before we come back to Luke chapter 14. Revelation 19, verse 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of most people in heaven saying, Hallelujah salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he had judged the great awe which did corrupt the earth with a fornication and had avenged the blood of his servants at hand. Quickly, let's go to verse 7. Um, let us be glad and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah. So the voice of a great multitude speaks of the bride. Remember Revelation chapter 7, a great number which no man could what? Or a great multitude which no man could number. He said, I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude. And then he said, as the voice of many waters. Revelation chapter 1, the voice of many waters is the voice of the bridegroom. Water speaks of thickness and multitude of people. So the voice of the bridegroom is in his people. Is that right? And the voice is emanating. And as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. So the marriage is taking place now and is taking place outside of Laodicea. And outside of Laodicea is the time of supper. Is that right? So the marriage is taking place during supper time. He said, let us be glad for that marriage has come. And his wife hath made herself ready. 
And we said the bride made herself ready to finally the ministry or the first ministry of William Bram. Because the first ministry of William Bram was to turn the heart of the children to the fathers. The fathers were the Pentecostal fathers. So when the bride became again like the early church, that was the bride ready. Is that right? When we became exactly like the early church, that was the bride made ready. And upon the earth, I don't think we have any group of people who, are, who have been made this ready. I don't think we have. People who once again have told the women to stay off the pulpit. People who now understand the place of speaking in tongues. How you don't speak in tongues in public? If you do that, there must be interpretation. Is that right? We, we, we understand the trueness of the Godhead. It is not three persons in one. It is actually one God with three different manifestations. Is that right? That's the true Godhead. And then all of these things have been brought in back, church order, everything restored to the church. That means that the wife has made herself ready. And because she was ready was why the marriage could now come. But the marriage is coming at supper time. Is that right? That's when the marriage is coming. And at that time is when Jesus reveals himself. So Brother Bam preached the message, the unveiling of God. So we had the prophet telling us, I am unveiling God to you. The God that is veiled, the God that you don't know, I now unveil him. I take away the veil. Now you can see him clearly as he is. And all of this is taking place outside of Laodicea at the same time that the bride has made herself ready. And she's ready now for marriage. And the marriage is taking place at supper time. Because the marriage is supper. The marriage is communion. The marriage is feasting on the unfailing body world of the Son of Man. The marriage is the invisible union of the heavenly bridegroom and his earthly bride. That union is the bride eating the unfailing body world at supper time. Eating it as she eats, she's united. Does it make sense to you? As she eats the unfailing body world, that is marriage. That is united. She's becoming one with the bridegroom. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white right clean and what white if you are part of this marriage you have received a change of garment not a change of body there is a spiritual garment that the believer receives that is fine linen clean and what white for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. So to be righteous, you are arrayed. You don't walk at righteousness. It is not of your doing. He says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Abraham believed and it was counted unto him for what? Righteousness. So God gives you righteousness. So we see here that righteousness is actually a garment. A garment that is robed on you. You are robed in new garment. It's what the Lord endures with us. So when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you receive the garment of righteousness, the garment of holiness, the garment of praise is what you receive. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which accord unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, so we've got people who are invited. The marriage supper is future. Huh? The marriage supper of Revelation 19 verse 9 is in the future. It is the wedding supper in glory. And those invited are the Old Testament saints. But right now we have a spiritual supper that is taking place. It's what we're looking at now. There's a spiritual supper that is taking place. And in Luke chapter 14, God was inviting those 
that should form the end time bride. His call was not heeded by everyone. They were giving excuses why they couldn't come to supper, why they couldn't come to feast with the king. They were too busy to come eat of the unfailing body world of the Son of Man. One of them said he had a wife, he just got married. One of them said he needed to go and inspect a land he just bought. Look, this is the kind of excuses we hear people giving today. Even in church. Why are you not coming? I have barrier to attend. I have this to do. And people will so convince you about why they cannot be in supper. Because when we come to feast on God's word, it is the unfailing body word we are feasting on. We are not feasting on a man. We are not feasting on man's intellect. Intellect, we are not feast, feasting on anything, any dogma, any creed. We are feasting on the unfailing body word of the Son of Man. And yet, many are giving excuses why they cannot come. Why they cannot come. They are giving excuses. May the Lord help us. Let's see something else that is happening. As the Lord invited people for the supper. Matthew chapter 22, we read from verses 1. Matthew chapter 22, verses 1. In the evening time there shall be light. There shall be light at evening time. He couldn't come at any other time. It has to be at the evening time. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidding to the wedding and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidding, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. Again, supper. Is that right? Dinner is not lunch. It's not breakfast. I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Come. But they made light of it. And went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. Going to the farm is a legitimate excuse. The Bible said, Those who do not walk, they should not eat. Uh, if you don't walk, you've denied the faith. You're worse than an infidel. I'm going now to walk. <laughs> but it was now an excuse, and for that reason, they, they refused them. And the remnant took his servant and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Even those that were sent, many were killed. The killing may not be literal. Uh -huh. It could be character assassination. Uh -huh. It could be any kind of thing to bring them down. But they, they treated them spitefully. But when the king heard thereof, he was wrath. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highway and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Huh? So everybody came now. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. But Abraham said he must have come through the window. So God allowed people to come through the window. He could have closed the window, is that right? But Abraham said they raised denominational ladders. They came through the window. So we have two entry to the marriage. 
through the door or through the window. What will show to us how you came is the garments you are wearing. So we can know if you came through the door or you came through the window. This very man had no change of garment. He was wearing his old denominational garment. He had not been robed by Christ himself. Because when you came through the door, Christ is the door. At the door, he will take your old garment and give you a new one. You don't need to ask for a new garment. You remember Joshua the high priest? Huh? His garment was stained. He did not even know that his garment was stained. Satan the accuser came. But the mercy of God came down and rebuked the accuser. And immediately the garment of Joshua the high priest was changed. He was given a new garment. You know, we're saying on Friday that even us, we did not seek for reconciliation. Even when we were given excuses why we were yet seen as Christ died for us. And so even before you knew the path of salvation, God already made all the preparation to get you back to himself. So if you came through the window, you'll be spotted out. Your fully will be made manifest. You cannot fake garments. It's, not the, it's, a, it's a spiritual garment. It's when they look at you, you can know who you are. Whether you belong to him or not, the foundation of the law standard show, God knows those who belong to him. So anyone, you know, you could show anything to human beings. You could make them think that you are a believer. But God knows who you are. And so, this one came through the window and he said, he said unto him, friend, how camest thou in either not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. <laughs> he couldn't talk. He was speechless. Then said the king, because you know, when you have been found that, you can't talk. Because now you are before the Lord of light. There is no shadow of turning. You can't lie to him. Even before, he doesn't even want to hear your word. He can hear your thought. So when he asks you a question, he doesn't require you to answer. You, can, you, you answer by who you are. Who you are will speak out. So you can't fake it. He, he, he's, been, he's been hiding. He's been impersonating. But now, he's fully he's made manifest. Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Of the many that have come, it is few, the true believers, that are chosen that are chosen and they are the only ones who will partake of the unfailing body word of the son of man they are the only ones let's listen to the prophet Abraham said in the message, things that are to be, things that are to be, paragraph 108, 107, sorry, things that are to be. He said, did you have reservations? Well, I'm sorry, everything is filled up. You are out in the cold because you failed to make reservations. And if you come to the end of your life's journey without reservations, there will be no one there to meet you. 
you will have to step off into a dark eternity where there will be screaming and weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. You must. You can't get into the city, you, because you haven't got reservation. You must have them to enter the city where Jesus has gone to prepare a place for you. Remember, you must have reservations and the garment of salvation on. Now, you know what reservation is? Reservation is your theophany. Huh? Then, there's another one called garment of salvation. Huh? Theophany is different. Theophany is waiting. The garment of salvation is inside you now. When you are born again, you have the garment of salvation and then there is a reservation prepared for you before the foundation of the world, which is your theophany. In Matthew, I got a scripture here. I'm watching Matthew 22, the scripture we read, 1 to 14. I haven't, um, I haven't time to read it because it's getting too late. I spoke too long to you, but remember, the king sent forth and made a supper. He killed all of his oxes and fixed the fatlings and everything, had a great supper prepared, and he sent out and he bid many to come. One said, well, you know, after all, I belong to this, I got this, I got to go with my farm, and one did many things, and he sent again, and they evilly mistreated them. This was the Jewish generation Jesus was talking to. They had something else to do. Then finally, he sent in. He said, just compel them. Huh? Go into the streets and highways and everywhere and compel them to come in. And after that, determined that his house, his wedding supper was going to be set. There's going to be guests there. And then he found a man in there which had the wedding garment on. He wanted to hold to the old coat. Huh? He wanted to what? Hold to his old coat. And look what he said, friend, after I have invited you to my wedding supper, and I invited you and give you an invitation to come. And if you ever was in the Orient, which I preached in many times, that, that wedding supper is still carried on just the way it was. The bridegroom, all he has, so many guests he's going to have, probably Brother Cop, probably you watched it there in India. They have so many guests that he's going to ask, say he's going to ask 30 guests. And the bridegroom has to furnish the robes. He has to furnish them. Therefore, there is a man stands at the door and you come up with your invitation, he examines your invitation, and he puts you on a garment, a robe, that some of them are rich, some of them are poor, some of them are different, but they all look alike when they got the robes on. There's no rich man there anymore, because we all wear the same robe in the spirit. Is that right? It's the same robe in the spirit. And you have to all be alike. You aren't going to ever say, I'm a Methodist over there. I'm a Presbyterian over here. You aren't going in, in the first place. you got to come by the door. Jesus said, I am the door to the sheepfold. I'm Pentecostal, I'm this, I'm that. That don't mean one thing. You come by that door. And if you come by that door, you get the robe. And this man, when he said, how did you get in here, friend? It showed it come up some other way and come in a window, but not through the door. Not through the door, the way that Jesus came, through self-sacrifice, giving your all to God and walking to Calvary and be crucified with him and raised again to wear his garment of sacrifice and death to the things of the world. Because coming through the door, the man needed to give up his old clothes. He didn't want to give it up. He didn't want to sacrifice it. Is that right? So he held on to it. He saw a way through the window. That is the way that Satan had provided. And felt coming up that way, he could still keep the old garment and be in the marriage. But it was spotted out. If you love the world or the things of the world, the love of God is not even in you. See, if you still have the love of the world, you want to act like the world, you, 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 and you, yet you are in church but a cockle ball in the past with the wheat. You shout with the rest of them, you rejoice with the rest of them. All the spiritual blessing is right upon you. You say, well, I prophesy, so did Caiaphas, so did Balaam. 
I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but the Brahm said that still has nothing to do with it. It's just only a temporal gift. The real gift is your soul down in there, see, that was born of God. And that controls the whole thing to the word of God and the will of God. And there you grow up, see, then you are a son and daughter of God. You are a child of God. And these things you come like mother now, you are in the bowels of the earth trying to comfort. You are a son of God coming forth. And you see the word says, I should do this, I should be born again. Is that right? I should be born again. Paragraph 116. Brother Bram said, um, okay, 115, see what I mean? Oh, little children, do you feel the need of that vitamin tonight? That something. There is a body waiting yonder. There is a body waiting to be received. People, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. The devil is a deceiver. Even the wedding garment, you must wear it. It must be. Now we are at the evening time. The earthly body is now ready to be dissolved. And we are preparing to enter into the heavenly. And we now feel the strange call of God to go to this great Eden. And before we can be born here, our little bodies cried for something that had to be provided or would be an afflicted child here if we wasn't. God has no afflictions up there. Everyone perfectly lined up, the bride just exactly like the groom was. The word is manifested in its season. God grant tonight, children, each and every one of you, there is a heaven to go to. There is a hell to stay away from. You love that? There is a hell to stay away from. No need to be impersonating. There is no need to um, act what you are not. Stay with the word of God. Huh? Do what is right. Have your wedding garment on. Make no impersonation. Do not settle for anything less until you get that baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is the only thing that can qualify you to eat. If you are not born again, you cannot eat. Hope you know that. You can't eat the word of God if you are not born again. You can't eat. It is only those who are born again that cannot begin to eat the word of God, that can begin to sup the word of God. So it's the new bed that takes you to that pedestal where you cannot feast on the word of God. Before we go to the Lord's table, and the anointed ones at this end time. Paragraph 366. 366, the anointed ones at this end time. Three sixty-six. Brother Bram said, I wasn't the one that appeared down on the river. I was only standing there when he appeared. I'm not the one that performed these things and foretell these things that happens as perfect they are. I'm only one that's near when he does it. I was only a voice that he used to say it. It wasn't what I knew. It's what I just surrendered myself to. That he spoke true. It isn't me. It wasn't the seventh angel. Oh no. It was the manifestation of the Son of Man. It wasn't the angel, his message. It was the mystery that God unfolded. It's not a man, it's God. The angel was not the Son of Man. He was a messenger from the Son of Man. The Son of Man is Christ. He is the one you are feeding on. You are not feeding on a man. A man, his wealth will fail. But you are feeding on the unfailing body word of the Son of Man. That's what we are feeding. It's real, brothers and sisters. It's real. It's rich. All you need is to be born again. Then you can begin to eat. You can begin to become one. It is the new birth that brings you access to the marriage. 
is the new birth that takes you into the marriage because it is in eating you are uniting with the bridegroom and it says here if you haven't fed fully on every word to give yourself strength to fly above all these denominations and things of the world will you at this time do it while we pray let us bow down our heads while we pray why we pray. Sacrifice is required. You must give up everything that you are in order to accept what he has freely provided. You cannot keep the old garment and function in the marriage of the Lamb. You cannot keep the old garment and come sit on the table to feed on the unfeeling body world. You will be driven out. You will be spotted out and binded hand and foot and thrown into the coming tribulation. It's a simple thing. Come through the door. Give up who you are. Sacrifice whatever achievement you've made. Sacrifice everything, whatever knowledge you've got, whatever creed, whatever dogmas, whatever self that remained of you, lay on the altar and take what the Lord has freely provided. It comes without money, it comes without price. What is required is to give yourself up. Don't try to escape, give yourself up. Get that old man killed don't listen to the devil's shortcut don't listen to the devil's idea he's a deceiver he's cunning he's even within the message cycle providing men alternative to God's original way but God is not going to change you must sacrifice yourself at the door you must come to Christ you must give yourself up that's the only way you'll be granted entry and access to the unfailing body world of the Son of Man. Look at that guy with the old garment. He was hiding, hiding. He couldn't come to the table, just hiding, lottering around until he was spotted out. Until he was spotted out. And God is daily spotting impersonators out and binding them, sealing them up for the tribulation make it because this is the judgment he said judgment must begin at the household of god we've come to judgment the marriage of the lamb is judgment seen is the ecclesia that are gathered anyone that is not properly fit or properly robed will be spotted out litigators are here the jurors are here this is not a place where you can hide. This is not a place where you can play anky panky. If you are not ready, you will be spotted out. And you may feel fine in the flesh, whereas you will be judged in the spirit. In fact, the, the consequence of judgment could be that they may promote you in your working place. All of this is to indicate that you are out. You may be dying and smiling. You wouldn't even know. You may be going scot free, but one day may just be the last day for you. You can retrace your step back. You came through the window. Only yourself crawled through the window back out and try to come through the door. Try to come. There's no gain. There's no gain impersonating. There's no gain playing church. There is no gain playing bride. No. It's either you are bride or you are not. But this is supper time. And the lost table is ready. Remember we've come to the communion service. We have before us representative of the spiritual food that we are having in due season. Only those who are eating spiritually should partake of this physical bread and wine. So if you are so minded, if you truly are communing with the Lord spiritually, you can proceed, you can approach the lost table.